So it says consider the circuit below. The capacitor has some capacitance. Um, I guess it's important that it's a given quantity and starts out uncharged. So that's good to know. Uh, it's the common assumption, but good to have it verified. The switch is closed at time t equals zero. Okay. So it's asking about, okay, what's its a transient behavior at t equals zero? And once again, the thing to note about the transient behavior is that it's governed by this rule that the voltage drop across the capacitor is given by its, uh, the definition of capacitance. Uh, and you know, doing the rewriting of the definition, you get delta V is equal to Q over C. And at time T equals zero, the amount of charge on the capacitor is zero, which means the the voltage drop across the capacitor is zero. So that allows you to treat the capacitor as though it's a simple wire at this time t equals zero. Which means, I think I can simplify this circuit. Let me um, draw the what I think is the simplified version of the circuit and just to verify that the topology uh, fits. So I have the battery. That battery is gonna be connected to these two registers, R1 and R2, that are going to be parallel, so not R2, R3, that are going to be parallel uh, because they are connected at both ends. They are connected at this end, and at this end, it's as though they are connected by wire. And um, at the other end here, they are again connected by two registers, R2 and R4. And these two registers are also in parallel because uh, one end, they are one end is, uh, these two ends are like they are connected by wire. And the other end is literally connected by wire. And this is now connected to the battery. So double check the topology. So the, the kind of simplification you are seeing is that these two junctions, I can basically bring them together and make it into just the one single connecting point, which is what I've done here. And um, as long as you are justified in treating the capacitor as a wire, uh, this is perfectly fine. So once you have redrawn your circuit into this form, then, oh, it's a, uh, you don't even have to use the Kirchhoff's rules. You can simplify these two registers as parallel, simplify these as parallel, then you have two equivalent registers that are in series, add them up, and uh, your current from the battery will be simply the voltage of the battery divided by the R equivalent, where I'm gonna assume you can work out the equivalent resistance to you know, takes more algebra than I want to do right now. <laughs> so, okay, that was enough. Now, yeah, so, um, <laughs> so let me move on to part B. So, I, I, yeah, I think I'm thinking of part C, which is a little bit more complex than parts A or B. But parts A and B are kind of simple. So let me do part B, which is a gamble. So part B is asking a long time after the switch is closed. So it's uh, looking for that asymptotic behavior. And with the asymptotic behavior, the thing to remember is that the current through the capacitor is a zero. So that's, uh, uh, that means you are treating the capacitor like an open circuit. So rather than this being a capacitor, imagine this is a piece of wire that has been broken. That's uh, how you can treat the circuit as. And I guess if I can treat the circuit that way, then it also simplifies again. Let me draw the equivalent circuit and just double check if it looks right. I have the battery. That battery is gonna be connected. Okay, I have a one junction up here. That's gonna be that junction. That'll be connected to registers R1 and registers R3. And there's no connection between these two points. This is like an open circuit, no current flows through it. So this junction, it's no longer a junction. It's just a piece of wire that goes to R2. And same thing with this other, what used to be junction. So a piece of wire that goes to R4. So these are registers R1, R3, R2, R4. 
And now they are connected to this junction here, which is now connected to the other end of the battery. So this is another circuit that can be simplified as being series and parallel. These two registers are in series. These two registers are also in series, add them as series. And then the resulting equivalent resistance is in parallel. So add them as parallel, you'll get some, um, you'll get some uh, equivalent resistance. And the answer here is the voltage of the battery divided by that equivalent resistance at prime. It's gonna be a different value than this one because when you have these four registers and then the order in which they add is parallel in series, that will matter. So, um, but it's kind of, again, simple question of um, doing the calculation. <laughs> So, so you can find the current that way. So in part C is the follow-up question about part B because it is still at the same limit a long time after the switch is closed. So I can still have this picture in mind as I'm answering part C. And it's asking for charge on the capacitor. Okay. Um, Yes, thinking about the definition of capacitance, um, so rewriting it, uh, Q is equal to CV. So I guess if you, if I know the voltage drop across the capacitance capacitor, that I can figure out the charge. So what I'm looking for is actually this, the voltage difference across from point A to point B. Once I know delta V, a, B, then that's my uh, voltage drop, voltage change across the charged capacitor, and that'll lead me to the charge. So once I find this, then I can write down my answer as the capacitance, which was given, times that voltage change across those two uh, points. And finding the voltage change is, um, I think that's the easiest to do uh, after figuring out the currents through each of the branches, IA and IB. And you can figure out the, the current through each of these branches by using the equivalent resistance here. IA should be the battery voltage, uh, battery voltage divided by the equivalent resistance of R1 and R2. I'm gonna label it R12. <laughs> IB should be the same thing, just with the values of the equivalent resistance of R3 and R4. I'm just gonna label that um, R34. <laughs> it's R3 plus R4. Um, and once you have those currents, then um, to get the voltage at A, the easiest way to do it is kind of um, use a piece of Kirchhoff's rule or not even, well, maybe using Ohm's law is a better description. So you have this current IA that's flowing through this um, register. You know it's going to reach this point that has a voltage zero volt. So you can imagine moving from this point to this point. You are going to get a rise of plus IA R2. So the voltage at A is gonna be plus IA R2. And in a similar way, the voltage at point B is going to be plus IBR4. And once you have these voltages, look at their difference. That's your voltage difference, delta V AB. I don't really know which one is gonna be higher, but you know, when you plug in the numbers, you'll see. So, so yeah, I, this question is probably more like any, um, more like a realistic circuit analysis than anything, which is where you kind of have to learn how to think, how to simplify certain parts of the circuit that can be simplified. And you also need to know how to analyze little pieces of circuit, not necessarily, you know, just a, a kitchen sink approach of solving the entire circuit. You know, that's almost easier than creatively thinking about which um, tiny little pieces of information you need. So, so, okay, that's this question. I think I've covered enough for people to be able to work out the rest, <laughs> you know, add the registers and <laughs> plug in the numbers. <laughs> um.